Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Son, to the Father, to the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We understand that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, and given freely as a gift to those who obey him. If you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go to uh, let's go to John chapter seven, verse fourteen. John chapter seven, verse fourteen. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up to the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knows this man letters? How does this man know letters, having never learned? All right, so they asked him, How in the world he how, how in the world can he teach out of the book? And he ain't even learned the he ain't even learned the letters. He ain't even learned the scriptures yet. When they say letters, he's talking about the scriptures. All right, so it's like how does he how does he know the scriptures like this? How can he teach it? And he has never learned the scriptures. All right, who'd he learn from? What seminary would he, did he go to? Right? Who ordained him? Right? Who's this who is who's this pastor head? Right? That's what they are looking to. They are trying to figure out what gave him the authority. Right? What gave him the uh uh what what set him out, right? What what qualified him? What credibility does he have does he have? Right? They don't even know where the man comes from. Let's look. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Uh -huh. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeks his glory that sent him, the yeah. same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. So yeah. now we know that if we do the will of the Father, simply just do the will of the Father, at the very least we'll know when these people teaching us doctrine or trying to show us something, in the book, we'll know if it's of God or not. That's what Yahushua is trying to let us know. He's trying to let us know, you'll know if what I'm giving you is true or not, based off of if you do the will of the Father. Right? So that's why it's important when we come here, and the Most High God reveal even the smallest thing unto us, that we walk in what he reveals. Otherwise, if we don't, then we're susceptible to learning for false doctrine. Right? Everything that we try to do is to tear down false doctrine and build up correct doctrine. Right? Last week we left off on Acts. Let's see if we can pick up. Acts chapter 25, verse 1. I'm trying to get on through Acts now. Now that we get through Acts, then we're going to talk about Revelations. And we're towards the back end of it now. <clears throat> It's Acts chapter 25, verse 1. Now when Festus was coming to the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him, and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. All right, so remember, remember those 40 guys that took a vow and they said, we won't eat or drink until Paul died. They still let his butt. All right, they're still trying to get him. Keep going. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he himself would depart shortly, shortly there. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. Mm -hmm. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea, and the next day, sitting in the judgment seat, 
commanded Paul to be brought. All right. So this is this is Festus. <clears throat> Festus was the governor, and he's looking like, okay, well, y'all still accusing this man. So let's go down to Caesarea, and then once we get down there, y'all can accuse him, and I'll judge the matter. All right. So remember, we we bounce back and forth to different judges who've heard the matter. And they are they are all trying to figure it out to where everybody's satisfied and or at least uh, resolve the situation in a satisfactory manner. All right. So they all have to hear the case. Right. So this is what Festus is about to hear. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. Right. So they, they gave many and grievous complaints against Paul. Books that they couldn't prove them things, though. All right? Let's see. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. So Paul was like, listen, I'm going to answer for myself. He said, man, I haven't done anything wrong. I didn't do nothing wrong against our people. I didn't do nothing wrong against Caesar. All right? He said, I haven't done nothing wrong to anybody. All right? So that's his defense to all the grievous complaints that they laid against him. Let's see. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, Will thou go up to Jerusalem and there be judged of these things before me? Right? So Festus, what he was saying is, he was trying to get rid of them. Right? All the Jews, there's a whole lot of Jews, the multitude, right? You know how our law tell us, don't go along with the multitude. Do. Do but, evil. huh? To do evil. Right? To do evil. But what we're looking at here is Festus. Is he going along with the multitude, right? The multitude was our people. And they are looking at, we need to get Paul. And we need to get him in a way that we can judge him ourselves, all right? So he offered, Paul, he was like, don't you want to go stand before the law in Jerusalem, right? Back in the hometown. Paul not crazy, though. So watch what he said. Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as you very well know. Uh -huh. For if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. He's saying, basically, if I did something wrong, I'm taking the punishment. Right? If I did something worthy of death, then I'm willing to die. You know what I'm saying? But he's saying, I, that's not the case. He'll say it. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. He said, I appeal unto Caesar. So if you remember back in Acts probably 24, I think it was, um, he was, well, right when he was captured, he gave his defense to all the people in Jerusalem, right? And then after that, the, uh, the Most High God spoke to him and he said, you also will have to give a defense in Rome. He's going to have to testify of me in Rome. So now that's why Paul right here is saying, I appeal to Caesar, because by doing that, that means he has to go all the way to Rome and speak before Caesar, right? So now that kind of ties Festus' hands a little bit. Let's see how he handles it. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, Have you appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar shall you go. All right, so he said, all right, well, he conferred with the council a little bit. He's like, well, your butt got to go to Caesar now. So let's see. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. Mm -hmm. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priest and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. Mm -hmm. To whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come here without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth. Against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation of such thing as I suppose, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. All right, so... Here's Festus, he's trying to explain things to King Agrippa, right? He's like, listen, this is what I'm dealing with right now, right? I'm dealing with some man, you know what I'm saying? They accusing him of all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, let me hear the case. When I heard the case, it was nothing that I thought they was going to be talking about. They were talking about their own superstition, right? They were talking about their own little stuff, their own religion, right? The stuff that they talking about. He was like, that thing ain't got nothing to do with me. He was like, and then 
they start talking about this guy named Yahushua, who supposedly is dead, but Paul's talking about the man is still alive. Right? So he's trying to explain this thing to King Agrippa. Right? Let's see what else happens. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appeared, appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, uh -huh. I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear of the man myself. Right, so Agrippa was like, well, before he goes to Caesar, I want to hear, I want to hear from him myself. Right, and then we're going to learn a little bit of why, why Agrippa would want to hear him before he goes to Caesar too. Keep going. Tomorrow said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come in Bernice with, with great pomp, and were entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city at Festus, Festus's commandment, Paul was brought forth. And, Foster, and Festus said to King Agrippa, and all men w which are here present with us, ye see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself has appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Wherefore, I have brought him forth before you, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination that I might have somewhat to write. Right. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. All right, so what he's looking at is, I have to write something. I'm sending this man to Caesar. He appealed to Caesar. I have to write something to make this case interesting. Otherwise, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to look crazy. So that's why King Agrippa is now sitting with him because he's going to try to help understand what the case is against him so that they can send it over to Caesar and that it'll make sense. When they say send him to Augustus, that's, that's what they're talking about. It's the same person. They, they're talking about the, the emperor. Augustus Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So now Agrippa is listening to Paul. Watch this. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things where I am accused of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Especially because I know you to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. All right, so he's, he understood that King Agrippa was an expert in, in our customs. Right? So that means he was familiar with our law. He was familiar with the things that we did. He called him an expert. Watch this. That's why I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Mm -hmm. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. All right? He said, after the most strict sect of our religion. In other words... After the most strict denomination of our religion, I was a Pharisee, right? In other words, he's saying the Pharisee is the most strict of all the people who will follow after the law. And he said, that's what I was, right? Let's see. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come, mm -hmm. for which hopes sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Right, so he's saying, they accusing me because I have hope in what the prophets say. Right? He said, for that hope, that's why the, the, the Jews are accusing me. That's why the Hebrew people are accusing me. Let's see. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Mm -hmm. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Yahushua of Nazareth. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Mm -hmm. And I punished them often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and, com and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Mm -hmm. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speak unto me and saying in a Hebrew tongue, Saul. In a what tongue? Hebrew tongue. So Saul. now these people get to run in their mouth talking about it don't matter what his name is. His name, I mean, gee, when I call on God 
and I pray to him, I pray Jesus. And let me tell you, that's who saved me. I called on Jesus, and Jesus saved me, running their darn mouth, right? When the Most High God spoke to Paul, what tongue he is speaking in? Hebrew. It better mean something. Y'all better call a man by his name. Y'all too. I ain't saying you got to learn Hebrew, but at least call a man by his name. You ain't got to learn Spanish to call a person by their name just because they got a Spanish name. Call a man by his name. You ain't going to call Jorge George. Nope. <clears throat> and if you do, you're disrespectful. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Keep going. And saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. Mm -hmm. And I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Yahushua, whom you persecute. Mm -hmm. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appealed unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness of both, uh, witness both of these things which you have seen and of those things in which I will appear unto you, mm -hmm. delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send you, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Mm -hmm. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judah, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do and do works meet for repentance. All right? He always looking at works. Don't ever forget it. What we always looking for, he looking for works. He said, do works meet. In other words, appropriate for repentance. All right? That means the things that you do have to represent true turning from sin. All right? Keep going. For these... For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day, witnessing both of small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say she come. said, I said nothing other than those things that who? The prophets and Moses did say should come. He said Moses and the prophets, they the ones that said this stuff. And that's the only thing I've been saying. Me and T was just talking before before we got started here, and T was saying that when he when he is dealing uh, with people in the book, he said he's able to put a person in a position where they have to either agree with the book or disagree with the book, because the things that he say is just gonna be right from the book, right? He's just gonna read it right out of the book. And they know that what they're doing is outside the book. So now they put themselves in a position where the only thing they can do is say the book is wrong or they can say they wrong. Right? And usually they try to say the book is wrong without actually saying the book is wrong. Right? That's the position that Paul is saying. He's saying, I've said nothing other than what the prophets have said. And yet these people are against me. What does that tell us? they saying the book is wrong. But they don't realize it. They don't see it that way. Same thing that we deal with today. People don't see it that way, but they're saying the book is wrong. If I tell you exactly, excuse me, if I tell you exactly what the book is saying, it's telling me that if you sin, you don't know God, but you say it's impossible to stop sinning, but yet I know God, then what you really saying is the book is wrong. You might not admit it. You might try to say, well, no, that's not what it means, or you don't understand it right, or accuse me of taking it out of context. But at the end of the day, what you're saying is that the book is wrong. Right? You just don't want to say it because you know it sounds ridiculous. Right? That's the same thing Paul is trying. That's the point that he's trying to make. He's trying to say, this whole time, I've, I've been a Pharisee. After these, say, these people right here, I was of the strictest sect of these people. He's like, I was doing the exact same thing. I was persecuting. I was doing the same thing these people were doing. But then the Most High God showed up to me. Once he showed up to me, I changed my course. And now I'm still only saying what the prophets and Moses was talking about. It ain't nothing changed. I'm talking about what prophets and Moses is talking about. I'm saying nothing else. Watch what you say now. That Messiah should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and, show, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning does make thee mad. Right? So, Festus, when he heard him talk, he is like, you crazy. 
<laughs> you talk all this stuff. Fessy, because Fessy don't know. He don't know nothing about our people. You see, King Agrippa, he was familiar with our customs. You know what I'm saying? That's just what that's just like. This man darn crazy. He like, you're doing all that darn book learning. And that stuff that made your butt crazy. Right? Watch what he said. But he said, I am not mad, most noble fellow, but speak forth the words of truth and nobility. Uh huh. For the king knows of these things, before whom also I speak freely. Right? So he's talking about King Agrippa. He is like, Fessy, I'm not crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling y'all the truth. That's what basically what he's saying. He's like, I'm just telling y'all the truth. I'm not crazy, and I'm doing it calmly and soberly. He is like, my words are very thought. I'm thinking, I'm thinking through everything I'm talking about. He said, everything is sober. I know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? He is like, and I'm saying this in front of King Agrippa, who knows what I'm talking about. He said, to whom I speak freely. He's talking about King Agrippa, because he's like, King Agrippa know what I'm talking about. Watch this. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, mm -hmm. for this thing was not done in a corner. He said, this stuff wasn't done in a corner? It wasn't hidden away? He said, I'm sure the King Agrippa know about everything I'm talking about. Right? Let's see. King Agrippa, believe, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that you believe. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuade me to be a Christian. Right? So you see that King Agrippa, he asked him. He asked him straight. Don't you believe the prophets, King Agrippa? He said, I know you believe, King Agrippa. He's like, don't you believe it? I know you believe. After that, King Agrippa came back here like, you almost convinced me to be a Christian. Right? He's like, you almost convinced me of being a Christian. Right? You look at Christian back then, they were talking about, they, it, was a, it was a term of, of mockery. Some of the traditions say, right? It was a term of mockery saying you're a follower of Christ, kind of mocking people, right? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you almost convinced me to follow this dude. You know what I'm saying? Because King Agrippa wasn't down for it. But he tell him you almost convinced me. That's because he knew, right? King Agrippa knew of all the events that Paul was talking about. He's familiar with our law. He's familiar with all these things. So the way that Paul prevented it, he was like, that thing almost sound right. You know what I'm saying? You almost convinced me to be a Christian. Right? But watch what Paul say. Watch how Paul say, you know what? I wish you would be a Christian. And everybody here that hears me, I wish they would be Christians too. Let's see how Paul say that. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Such as Christians? Such as I am. You notice he didn't repeat Christian. Right? You notice that he didn't say Christian because... That's not what he was. He never called himself that. We never call. He never called anybody else that. None of us ever called Chris. Uh, none of us ever called any of the disciples Christians. It was always people calling us Christians, right? We called ourselves disciples all through the book, right? We called ourselves disciples, disciples, disciples. Other people called us Christians, right? And King Agrippa was no different, right? Remember, he was familiar with our customs. But he still wasn't one of our people. He wasn't a Hebrew. So he spoke, he spoke Roman. All right, well, Greek. All right? And he is a Roman. And so when he spoke, he spoke using their terms, which Christian would be their term. Remember, we didn't have it. When you look at our people, the, the term that they used to call us was Nazarene. Right? They called us Nazarites. All right? Because it's looking like all these people came from Nazareth. Right, Yahushua came from Nazareth, and all these people came from around the same place he is. They followed this man from Nazareth, so they call us Nazarites. In other words, followers of the the the, the, the man from Nazareth. Nazarene. Right. So now we look at these things, and we look. There's the difference. The people who happen to be Romans, right? The Gentiles always use Christian. Right. The Hebrews use Nazarenes. Right. That was never our term. Christian was never our term. So that's why when Paul replied, he is sitting there like, remember, he's still in the court case, so he ain't about to tell me, don't call me no darn Christian. He ain't about to tell the man that. So what he is saying is, well, I wish altogether that not only that you almost was convinced, but that you altogether were just like I am. Right? Because he wasn't going to tell him, I wish you were a Christian, because he know that's not proper. He's like, man, that don't even make sense. But he's going to say, I wish that you was like me. And everybody else here, I wish that y'all not only was almost convinced, but that y'all all together in every way was just like me. All right? Grab uh
Grab uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. It's 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. First Peter, chapter four, and we'll start at about verse Beloved, think not, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. He said, when these people treat you wrong, he said, beloved, don't even think it's strange. Right? That's what Paul's going through right now. Right? You see Paul the whole time, he's like, man, I didn't do nothing to these people. And I didn't do nothing against Rome. All the stuff they accused me of is lies and they can't prove it. Right? And so now Peter is trying to give advice because Peter's seen all this stuff happen. He's been through it himself. He was like, man, don't think it, don't think it, don't think it's strange when this, these people come against you and you go through fiery trials. In other words, difficult scenarios based off of lies, right? Do not think it's strange, right? Let's see what else. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. If ye be reproached for the same. For the name of the Messiah, happy are ye, for the spirit of the spirit of glory and of God re rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Right? So when our people come come gathering around us, and they're like, man, you follow you follow the Messiah? I mean, you follow, uh, you follow that dude from Nazareth? And they start calling us Nazarenes. He is like, man, don't be, you know what I'm saying? Don't be ashamed of that. They were approaching the man based off of, uh, based off of false. Right? False information. Right? That's to our glory. Right? Watch this. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a he thief. He said, don't suffer as a murderer, though. He's like, he's like, that don't make no sense if you kill somebody. Right? Don't suffer that. Don't, don't. So he's talking about people coming at you and, and put you in fiery trials. So if people coming up and they lying on you, that's one thing. He's like, don't let them be telling the truth about you being a murderer, though. Let them accuse you of being a murderer. But don't actually be a murderer. So he said, don't suffer as a murderer. What else are we not supposed to suffer as? Don't suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer. Not as a murderer, as a thief, or as an evil. He said, don't be murdering. Don't be thieving. Don't be stealing nothing. And don't be an evildoer. What else? Or as a busybody in other men's matters. And running your darn mouth and all up in other people's business and spreading business around. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be involved with everything. He said, don't, don't be any of these things. Right? But what else? That if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on, his, on this behalf. Right? But if any man suffer as a Christian, he said, don't be ashamed. Right? All these things that he is naming were negative things. Murderer. A thief. Right? A darn busybody. Right? All these things that he's naming are negative, and then he put Christian in there. Because these are the things that the people would have called us. Right? These are the things that they would either lie on us about, right? Or the things that they would use to disrespect us. He's like, don't actually be none of these things that he's talking about. But if they call you a Christian, if you suffer as a Christian, he is like, man, just glory in it. Right? Just glory in it. These are the things that they called us. Right? Go to um Go to uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. The same day went Yahushua out of the house and sat by the seaside, 
And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into great the ship. Great multitudes did what? Gathered together unto him. That means they were following him. All right? In different places, actually, it says specifically they followed him. All right? So that makes them, by definition, followers of the Messiah or followers of Christ. Christians. By definition, that made them Christians. All right? Let's see what else happened. And sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Right? So he spoke to the people in parables. He said, Behold, the sower went to sow. Go ahead and skip on down to verse, what, 10, I want, 9? 10. 10. To verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Right? So they asked a the question. They want to know, Why are you speaking to these people in parables, Yahushua? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Uh huh. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. For whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away, even that he has. So read that one more time for me. He said, It's given unto who? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. So who is you in this sentence? The disciples. Who is them? Followers. You see how that distinction is made? Right? It's subtle things like this in the book that nobody's taught. If you're a Christian, there's no reason to look at this subtleness. If you're the Christian, you're the person following. You're the one saying, now saying. You're the ones that you the one that he's saying is not given to you. So what interest is it of you to highlight a piece where the book is telling you you're not getting something? This whole book has been taught to us through by Gentiles. And the whole book is telling you Gentiles have a, a different position and it's not necessarily the most prominent position. So you notice that the doctrine from Gentiles, they highlight anything in the book that says who you are or what race or, or, or what lineage you come from doesn't matter. And there's things in the book that says that, right? So that's their claim to fame. That's what they make the most important because they want to highlight how their position is just as good as anyone else. Even though the Bible was showing you and painting a pigeon, Picture that is not necessarily is not necessarily just as good as everybody else. There's a lot of history that comes with being a Hebrew. There's a lot of promises that come with being a Hebrew. But you won't learn about anything like that from a Christian because it was taught from a Gentile's position. Same thing reading here. You if you look at yourself as a Christian, there's no reason to highlight this. You read this and it's just like you the disciple and a Christian. You everybody in this sentence. We have to ask ourselves, who are the people that are following him? These are not atheists, right? These are not people that's like, I don't care about God. I want to do it. I want to do whatever I want to do. These are people that are looking for God, trying to learn from God. They're following him, right? And yet, the Most High God is telling us through his son, he's like, oh, no, they're not going to get it. I'm thinking them in parable because it's not for them to get. It. It's given on to y'all. Well, who is y'all? The disciples. Who is the them? The followers. The ones looking for, I mean, they looking for truth. Right? But they're not going to get it. That's why he's, he's purposely speaking to them in parables. Let's see what else we got. For whosoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that he has. In other words, for the disciples, the disciples going to get even more. They have, and they're going to get even more. Right? For the Christians, they don't have nothing. And what they do have is going to be taken away from them. Y'all have to make sure y'all understand what he's saying. I'm not making this stuff up. That's what the man is saying. He's saying for followers, for the multitudes that's just out there following, right? They, what they have, I mean, they don't have nothing. So what they have is going to be taken away. He said, disciples, is given unto you. And to whom has, more will be added to him. Let's keep looking. Now maybe I'm just making it up. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Mm -hmm. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. Mm -hmm. For this people's heart is waxed gross. And their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. 
And that's why we, that's a Christian. That's what he's describing to you, a Christian. Y'all don't know it because y'all don't look at the definition of it. Christian is a follower of Christ. These are great multitudes that follow this man. But he made a distinction. I wouldn't be able to say this if he didn't make that distinction. If he said everybody was following Christ, I mean, just by doing what Jesus said, you are a follower of Christ, then I would have to shut up. Right? But he made a distinction. He said there's people following him, people trying to learn from him, but he purposely speaks to them in parables so that they don't get it. But then he pointed to disciples. He said, but you, not so. For you is given to you. Right? He made that distinction, not me. So if he made that distinction today, who are the disciples versus the Christians or the multitudes? Right? It's like 2.2, 2, 2.3, 2. point more billion Christians in the world. Right? 33,000 denominations in the world. You tell me who the multitudes are. Who's this multitude that's following Yahushua, following Jesus? Right? And you tell me who the disciples are. How many of them call themselves disciples? They look at me like I'm nuts. Right? Because I think they don't want to look at it like this. He made the distinction. He made the distinction between two groups. Of, we could all stand back and we could say, did, did Paul, Peter, well, Paul wasn't on the scene at that time. So did Peter, James, and John, did they follow Yahushua? Yeah. Right? Okay, cool. Did the great multitudes follow Yahushua? Yeah. Okay, cool. Who? Why did he make that distinction then? It's important to know. It's important to understand. He's letting us know that there's a difference. It's a difference between being disciplined and committed to what we're doing than just that. saying, you know what, I'm just going to follow after it and I'm just going to show up and I'm just going to try to learn, but I'm not disciplined and I'm not committed to what we're doing. He made that distinction all throughout the book. Through the entire book, there's with a the Egyptians and the Hebrews, he made the distinction. With the uh, in the wilderness, he made the distinction. Um, uh, with the sheep and the goats, he's gonna make the distinction. Yeah, good point. Right, the distinction coming again. Always gonna be a distinction. He's always gonna let us know these people are approved, these people are not. All right, exactly what people don't like right now. People don't like for you to say somebody approved and somebody not. They just want everybody to just be, you know what I'm saying, just in la-la land. Like, uh, oh, well, just let everybody come to a decision on their own so nobody has to feel like anything. Ain't going to be with God. That's not how it's going to be with God. This is Acts uh, chapter 11 real quick. It's Acts chapter 11. By definition, Christians. Followers of Christ. Christians. He said, this thing is not given unto you. He said, the prophecy Isaiah is fulfilled in y'all. He said, bind up my, he said, bind up the testimony among amongst my the Christians. Disciples. I wonder why he didn't say amongst the Christians. Why, why didn't Isaiah tell us, bind up the testimony amongst the Christians? That wouldn't make no sense. He said, do it amongst the disciples. When Yahushua, he said, go out into the world and make disciples. Right? Teaching them all things that I have commanded. Why they never highlight this stuff? When do you say go out and make Christians? You'll never see it. Right? They see this though. This is Acts chapter 11, verse uh, 19. No, they which were scattered abroad among upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix mm -hmm. and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Yahushua. Mm -hmm. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Oh, so a great number of them... Believed and they ended up turning on to the Most High God. Watch this. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Right? So he went to Antioch. Antioch is not in Jerusalem. Antioch is not even in Israel. This is a Gentile place. Right? It's the city of Gentiles. 
But some of our people are there. So our people that are there in the city of Gentiles start worshiping the Most High God through Yahushua. They believe that Yahushua died and rose for their transgressions and that they could turn from sin and be made kings and queens and, priest, and, and made a priesthood in the new age. Right? This is what their belief was. So now, this is what happens. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then departed Bar Barnabas to Tarshish for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians the first who? in Antioch. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So if I say Terrence was called boy first in Las Vegas, what, who, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Terrence. Right? I mean, I, I, I gave you his actual name and who he is, and then I tell you what he's called. Right? If I said Terrence was called Steph Curry, are we going to say, okay, well, that makes Terrence Steph Curry? No, I'm telling you, that's what he called. We know he ain't Steph Curry. We know that he's Terrence, but they start calling him Steph Curry. That was a nickname for him. Right? In the same way, they said disciples identified exactly who and what they are. It's the book talking. It's not just, it's not just no commentary or somebody's opinion. The book is saying they actually were disciples, but they were called what? Christians in Antioch. So, I mean, let's just say the book from this point on, the book feel like they actually Christians, right? Because that's what we believe, right? We believe nowadays you believe in Jesus, you a Christian, right? So, I mean, from this point on, since that's where they were first called Christians, you would think that the book would just say Christians all the time, right? Let's see. Let's keep reading. The book just said that that's what they were first called Christians. So let them tell it. That's our new name from now on. Let's see. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Uh -huh. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Mm -hmm. Then the disciples... Every man according to his the ability. Who? The disciples. Uh-oh. Then the who? The disciples. Why didn't we get back to Christians? We had just called Christians. Why, why, didn't, why are you talking about disciples now? You'll never see it call us Christians. You'll never see anything in a book call us Christians. It'll tell you how other people called us Christians. We just read about King Agrippa calling us a Christian. We just read about Peter talking about how if other people uh, calls us to suffer as Christians... And we just read about how the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. But you'll never read about how a disciple calls another disciple a Christian. Or how the Bible refers to a disciple as a Christian unless it's telling you somebody else is doing it. And it's always going to be an outsider. Do not let these people confuse you with their traditions. We are not Christians. Y'all might be some darn Christians. We not Christians. Right? A Christian... It's not given on to a Christian. That don't make no darn sense. Right? It don't make sense for us to be in a position where we hear the word and we set ourselves up to not understand it, to not believe it. Right? The book is made for us. Right? The book put us in a position where we're supposed to understand the book. Right? When we look at these things, we need to put ourselves in a position where we learn it, we understand it, we're disciplined, and we walk forward in the teaching. Right? Keep going. Actually, no, grab uh grab John chapter 9. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some Christians. Baby, you mind doing me a favor? Can you go grab my charger? Yeah, I don't want. I think if it if it dies, it might cut off the video. This is uh John chapter nine verse thirty nine. Yahushua said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see 
might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? So the Pharisees looking at him like, Who you, you calling a blind boy? Right? Pharisees looking at y'all, sure, you, what you mean? They who see going to be made blind. What you mean? You trying to say we blind, boy? All right, let's see. Yahshua said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. He said, you'd be all right if you, if you were blind. <laughs> Excuse me. All right? He's like, if you were blind, you wouldn't have no sin. But you talking about you see. Therefore, your sin remains. All right? That's what's, well, that's what's going on. There's a lot of people out here that, that they claim that they see, they claim that they understand, they claim that they're Christians, they claim that they're followers of God and that they believe and all this stuff. They don't admit that they don't understand. They don't admit that they don't know what they're talking about. They don't admit that they need help. And so because of that, the Most High God is saying, since you don't need help, then I'm not going to give you help. He said, I've come to the sick. Right? Only the sick need a physician is what he's trying to say. Right? So if you sick, then you say you go to the doctor. But there's some people that don't like going to the doctor. <laughs> right? So how the doctor going to help me? How the doctor going to cure me if I'm sitting here telling them, no, nah, I ain't got no symptoms. I'm sitting there coughing every three seconds. But whenever I'm around the doctor, I just act like everything good. I hold my coughs in, I'm good. How the doctor going to know? He's just going to look at me and be like, good, good help. Great, you're doing great. Because he don't know. How are you going to help me? And that's the position that we're in now. Right? A lot of people are not admitting that they need help with the book. That they need help turning from sin. Instead, they'll say, no, I don't need to turn from sin. The reason why Jesus died is because I can't turn from sin. What you're really saying is, you see. And the book trying to tell you that you don't see. But since you say you see, your sin remains. Ain't nothing getting taken away. Your sin darn remain. Keep going. Uh, that's the end of the chapter. That's the end. Yeah. Grab, uh, grab uh, Acts for me. Acts chapter uh, 26 is where we left off. Yeah, 26, 29. Okay. It's Acts chapter 26, verse 29. All right? Because we're looking at Paul. Remember, Paul's in a position... Where he's bound, right? The book always say he's bound. He's in a position, pretty much he's in jail or he's captive. You know what I'm saying? He's a prisoner, right? So that's the position that the book has put him in, that the Most High God has put him in, all because of prophecy, right? Same position that you notice, Yahushua was in the same position, right? All due to prophecy, right? He was bound, right? All of it, all of it really, if you look at it, it all has to link back up to Yahushua, even the stuff we go to, right? We got prisoners, and we, our, our people as a whole are bound, right? We are brought here captive. All that, it's not really about us. All that links back to Yahushua. It has to represent him, right? We're put in a position, we are brought over here as slaves, we are lied to, we've been cheated, our wages have been changed seven times, ten times, right? That, that takes us back to Jacob. Right? But all of it goes back to Yahushua. Right? Everything has to go back to Yahushua. Right? But we, we can't think like that. We still call ourselves Christians. We still worship in Jesus. We still look at the man. We still buying Jesus pieces. We still, we still itching to go out to see the Son of God movie. Oh, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just my Right? Because we've been confused. We've been told lies and we've accepted them. We've trusted in the book. Grab uh, Isaiah chapter 30. It's Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. It's Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord. He said, woe to the rebellious. Woe means destruction. He said, destruction to the rebellious children, said the Lord. That take counsel, but not of me. Mm -hmm. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. Mm -hmm. that, they may be, that they may add sin to sin. 
that walked to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth mm -hmm. to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Right? He talking about our people. Right? We is always running down into Egypt. Right? When something got bad or whatever, we were trying to run down into Egypt other than looking to the Most High God. We tried to cover ourselves, made make sure we are good. He is like, but it wasn't a covering of my spirit. Right? It's not my doing. It's not what I told you to do. He said, we add sin to sin. Keep going. That trust in the shadow of Egypt, of Egypt, your confusion. For his, for his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hain. Mm -hmm. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from where came the young old lion, the viper of fiery flying serpent, and fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young donkeys, and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians mm. shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore I have cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Mm -hmm. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That's what he told Isaiah to do. He said, put that thing in a book. He said, make sure you put it in a book so it'll be for a time forever. He's talking about future at this point. Keep going. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, mm -hmm. which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. He's saying, we don't want to hear about it. Why would anybody say something to someone who knows more, who has a vision, and tell them we don't want to hear about it? See not. Right? Don't, prop don't prophesy that. Give us comfortable stuff. Why would they say that? Because they think they know. That's just like when you say, listen, you say you see, therefore, your sin remains. That's the only reason you would tell a seer not to see, because you think you already saw it. You saw it enough. Keep going. Prophesy not unto us right things. He said, we don't want to hear the right. What we want to hear? Speak unto us smooth things. We want to make sure that thing is smooth. Prophesy deceits. He said, we want to hear the lies. Is that not where we are? They want to hear pastors lie. They want to hear politicians lie. You get a politician to tell the truth on TV, these people don't want to hear that. They know politics. You ask anybody in a private conversation, you ask them, who's a bigger liar, politicians or lawyers? Just make a joke out of it. Especially if they say, I don't know, you could, you could toss it up. Because they know politicians are liars. Yet, when it comes down to a politician that they want to vote for, guess what? I just think Hillary Clinton is going to do everything she says. They know that she lying. They know Trump lying. They know all these people lying. Yet they support these people because that's what they want. They want a liar. They want somebody to tell them something that's smooth to them. Right? Same thing in the pastors. Same thing with the church. Same thing, same thing these people do. They just want to hear. They know these people lying. They know they're not being taught no darn book. They just want to hear somebody say something that's smooth to them. That's no different from how we were when we were in the land. Right? Isaiah trying to let us know this is how it's going to be. He said, write it in the book. It's, from a time. it's for a time. Right? Keep going. Prophesy deceit. Get ye out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Mm -hmm. That's why, thus says the Lord of hope, the Lord of... What you see a whole lot of our people doing now. Bible ain't real. Right? That stuff was made up. It was given to us by our slave master. Where do you think where do you think this stuff comes from? You think the you think the book just making stuff up? He's telling them what you say. We don't want to hear that stuff. Stop talking about it. Say something else. Say something smooth. Why you always gotta be negative? Right? Say something smooth. Right? Cause the Holy One to cease from among us. Right? In other words, he's not real. Where do you think it comes from? You think he's just making stuff up? He told you this stuff was going to happen. That's where we are right now. He told him, write it in the book. Write it in the book. That stuff's going to come. He says, for a time, make sure they understand. Make sure it stick around so they see it. 
Man, always going to be right. Keep watching. Get ye out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus says the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression. He said you despise this word. The Most High God is saying, wherefore, in other words, since you despise this word and, and trust in oppression and perverseness. And you trust in your oppression and perverseness. That's where we are right now. They can feed us the white Jesus. They can feed us all this, this Egypt, Egypt stuff. We still running back to Egypt. I don't, think I, I don't think I missed that in there. We still running back to Egypt. You see, he started up. He said, y'all always go back to Egypt. It's a wonder that the most woke of us, right? You know, if people stay woke, right? We woke. The most woke, the most conscious of us, a lot of these guys think we from Egypt. I wonder why. You think this stuff is just made up? You think he's just coming up with stuff out of nowhere? We doing the same thing. It's the same pattern. And he told you what's, what was going to happen. We think Egypt is going to be the strength? Yeah, okay. Okay. The man letting you know you trust in your oppression. These people will tell you anything and you trust them. You trust them. Right? A lot of these people Democrats. Our people, we supposed to be Democrats. Right? That's how it's supposed to go. You supposed to be a Democrat. You black? You a Democrat. You ain't got no business. Black people poor. You ain't got no business being a Republican. Guess what they ain't going to tell you? Who had the slaves? Democrat. We trust in our oppression. Who freed the slaves? Republican. Well, kind of. They ain't really free. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? The one of the men, that, the, the man that get the credit for it, you know what I'm saying? Abraham Lincoln, you know what I'm saying? He later became a Republican. You know what I'm saying? He was the Whig Party, I think, at first, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? At the time, it was the Whig Party, and then they later pretty much became Republicans. But then, you had Democrats, right? Democrats was the resistance. They was the Confederates. All the Confederate flag talk that they flying around, that was Democrats. And that wasn't Republicans. And Christians. Democrat. Democrat. Christian Democrats. <laughs> Lighting crosses on fire. They were Christians doing this. Democrats. That ain't a bad idea, though. Well, lighting the cross on fire, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Let that thing burn, huh? <laughs> right? Doing this stuff in the name of their Lord. Right? But we trust in our oppressors. We look at them and we say, okay, we'll take it. Right? We'll take it. We'll worship your Jesus, even though we ain't read about him in this book. We ain't read about that Jesus. We ain't read about the Jesus that say, go ahead and light a cross on fire and uh, enslave people. His people. We ain't read about that nowhere in the book, but we'll take it. Right? A lot of this stuff we trust. We trust we trust whatever they tell us. They tell us, they push us around. You got people walking around. I was talking to uh, I was talking to uh, Oak yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And she was she is uh she is telling me it's people out here that are uncomfortable, our people uncomfortable talking about race. Same thing with me. You know what I'm saying? I see people, you know what I'm saying, they uncomfortable, they don't want to talk about race. You know what I'm saying? They don't like talking about all this stuff, they think they think it's just it's a waste of time to talk about race. I don't see that's a wonderful luxury to have. I don't see how you could do that and be and, and be our people. Right? You Hebrew and you are you black and you don't want to talk about race. That's crazy. I don't see how I don't see how you could do it. You could add that luxury, you white. But I get it, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to talk about it either if I was white. But you black and you don't want to talk about race. Why? What honest thought came from you that said, you know what? I think it's a good idea to start. That's no honest thought. Your oppressor has told you that. Your oppressor has made you comfortable or made you uncomfortable. Speaking about your own injustice because it makes them uncomfortable. And you go with it because you trust your oppression. Right? You put yourself in a position. You know that if you be like, nah, you know what, this is unfair. I'm not being paid enough at this job. And you always complain, and that's what they're going to say about you. You just complain. Just complain. I mean, that's all you do. You know, you can't be like those other black people. Right? You have to be exceptional. You have to rise above it. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Meanwhile, when did they do it? We pulled them up by their bootstraps, and now we got to pull up and pull ourselves up too. And we can't complain while we do it. I run my darn mouth if I want to. Right? You owe us at least that. At the very least. That's crazy. How are you not going to talk about race? The only way you can do it is if you trust in your oppressor. Keep going.
Wherefore, thus says the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, mm -hmm. therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in the high wall whose breaking comes suddenly and in an instant. Mm -hmm. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces he shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of all, its, all of it a shard to take from the to take fire from the earth or to take water with all out of the pit. Alright? This is the things that he set up for us. Alright? He's going to break us and he's going to break us in many ways. We can read about it in Deuteronomy chapter 28. We don't have to get it. But we can read about it in Deuteronomy chapter 28. He tells us all the ways that he's going to break us. Alright? You see the, the uh, you see all the people that get off of these, 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 these cops that get off of these killers. Y'all saw the video. I don't know if y'all saw it. They didn't, it didn't get big, but it's a video that, that was going around, I think, last month or a month before of a man. He is live streaming himself getting shot by the police in this car. They just start shooting at him. Right? And the video just showed that, you know what I'm saying, just, you could just see blood just splatter. And you can't see him. You know what I'm saying? You just got a video and you can see, you can see the car and the windows. You just show blood just being splattered. They killed the man right in the car. Just shot into the car, police officer, protect and serve, shot into the car, killed the man. Which one of them going to jail? They got the, the lady that just got off, uh, got off her, her charge. You know what I'm saying? She, uh, I think his name was Crutcher. He killed him when he was, uh, had his hands up while yep. he was in the car. Yep. Had the man had his hands up. She killed on video. Right? They were talking about it last night. All right. Uh, yeah, they were talking about it last night. You know what I'm saying? Talking about how, you know what I'm saying, she lied in her testimony and all that, and the video proved it all. What jail she go to? She let off. You got another one, he had just put on administra paid administrative leave after, after shooting some black folks. Right? This is what we look at. Go to, uh, go to Zechariah chapter 11. I don't know what verse I'm looking for, so we might have to start at 1. It might be verse 4 that I want. I just want y'all to know this thing. I mean, this thing ain't made up. What are we looking at? A lot of this stuff that happened, and I, I we know the book ain't made up. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the stuff that's happening around us. This stuff is not made up. It's not, this stuff around us is not just like by accident. Like It's not just something that's just happening. This is Zechariah chapter 11, verse 1. <coughs> Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. How, O fir tree, for the cedar is fallen, because the mighty are spoiled. Mm -hmm. How, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the villages come, villages come down. Mm -hmm. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the, of the roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord my God. This is what the Lord my God says. Feed the flock of the slaughter. He said, feed the flock of the slaughter. In other words, make sure that these people who are about to get killed are real fat. I mean, just hook them up. Right? Feed the flock of the slaughter. Watch this. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they, who what? Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. What does he mean by possessors? Slave master. How you think we got here? On the, the Santa Maria? The Pinto? You know what I'm I don't know the boat. It's something like that, though. You know what I'm saying? We didn't get here on the Santa Maria. We got here on slave ships. All right? They possessed us when they got here. They owned us. All right? He said their possessors slay them, and they hold themselves what? Not guilty. That's why, that's why the killer of, uh, uh, I think it's Tom, is it Thomas Crutcher? That's why the killer of Crutcher can go home. That's why the officer that, that killed uh, Sandra Bland can go home. Right? That's why the officer who killed uh, Mike Brown can go home. That's why all these, all these cops, and I mean, we just, we just call them up the highlights. But there's so much more that's going on that nobody, it doesn't even reach the TV screen. It just gets reported on a blog somewhere, and you just got to read about it. It's to the point that we're numb, right? It's to the point when when these things happen, the only thing you can say is, I don't even want to see the video. You're numb to it. 
It doesn't even cause a reaction in a lot of people no more. Same thing happening. It's just like, oh, whatever. That's just how it is. That's how bad it is. It happens so much that we're numb. We do the same thing, all right? They make jokes about it. But, I mean, it's a big thing about, like, transgender and all this stuff and how they being bullied. Let any of it, let, let the killing rate from officers against transgender people happen at this rate. And see that not, not the world freak out. Right? A lot of the stuff that happens to us. Right? You have women right now, they going around talking about equal pay. Right? Hillary Clinton was on, uh, she had an interview, and she was saying that um, they, they had, in, in April, they had a, uh, a, a women's rally. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it was based around equal pay in April. And the reason why they had it in April, she said that that's how many months, you know what I'm saying, it would take for, at the beginning of the year, for women to actually have, make us the same amount of money on average, to make the same amount of money as men for the last year. In other words, for, for as much money that men make, they can make that amount in 12 months. Women would have to add four more months to the 12 to, in order to make that same amount of money. Right? And then everybody's up in arms and everything. So let me ask you, who up in arms about the black? You trying to say the black man make more? I bet you the, I bet you the white woman make more money than the black man. Who fighting for that, though? Who fighting for it? Unemployment across the board is twice for black people than the rest of the nation. Who fighting for it? Who does that outrage? What rally are we picking up for? Huh? How is it that immigrants, whether they're from Mexico, whether they're from Canada, whether they're, they're, they're refugees coming in from, from Iraq, in, in, in coming in from uh, Syria. How is it that they're here and they can open up corner stores in our neighborhoods? They can open up their own business in our neighborhood. How did that happen? I'll tell y'all. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 41. I'll tell you how that happened. They try to lump the Mexican in with us too. Mexican got darn Roberto, Pepe's. They got Cardenia. They got grocery stores all over. Cardenias. You know what I'm saying? What else the Mexicans got? Uh, Los Compadres. You know what I'm saying? They got Los Palos Padres. You know what I'm saying? They got all types. They got clothing, grocery store, fast food. They got it all. And I'm not just talking about like one clothing store. They all over the town, they have grocery stores. You think, I mean, the east side, they got a whole lot of them, right? Yeah, super. Over here, though, they have grocery stores. Right down the street. This is in the north. What they got a grocery store over here for? If we got a store, it's on one part of town. And we probably don't even really own it. Truth be told, it's right? Like, we probably just a minority owner, and we're the face of it. It's like a lot of that stuff was black on, like in our mom's day. All that get bought up, yeah, and we get pushed out, yeah. right? They push trying to push them out of the west side right now. So tell me how that happened. Who? Let's. I mean, let's just kind of look at the timeline here. So America, America before America was America, got started. In the 1600s, right? People came over about 1600. Let's see, slaves got here in the 1600s, about the same time that they came over here. So how is it that after all these years, the people who brought us over as slaves are doing wonderful, we're doing terrible, and then immigrants who come are doing wonderful as well? The people who've been here the longest, or amongst the longest, are doing terrible. Right? Are we going to say slavery has nothing to do with it? It's ridiculous. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. I wonder what that's talking about. He said, we're going to have sons and daughters, but we're not going to enjoy our sons and daughters, 
because they're going to go into captivity. In other words, slavery. Right? Let's keep going. All your trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. Mm -hmm. The stranger that is within thee shall He said, get the up. stranger that is within thee Shall get up above thee very high. And shall, you shall get up above very, thee very high. And then what else? And you shall come down very low. What else going to happen? He shall lend to thee and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head and you shall be the tail. Now it makes sense. The stranger, whether he's Mexican, whether he's from Iraq or Syria, right? He going to come in your neighborhoods. He going to get within thee and he going to get above thee. And then he going to start lending to you. So the check cash in places, the loan places, yeah, they own that too. And they're going to they start lending to you, right? Japanese people, Chinatown, all this stuff, they all got their own. You got Koreatown. You got all these different things. They got their whole parts of town. What we got? The ghetto. Appropriately named, right? That's what we got. We don't make no money off of it. A lot of people make money off of us, though. And that's the reason why. He told you. They're going to come in. They're going to get within thee. Right? They're going to be within thee, and they're going to rise above you. And they're going to lend money to you. Right? That's why we're where we are. This stuff is not just something happening. It's not no, no seven-point plan that you can put together and say, let's overcome our oppression. This stuff go way deeper than all that. Way deeper. The most you can do is speak to these people and tell them that they're wrong. And tell them to admit that they wrong. Right? The things that were done was wrong. Their ancestors did things that were wrong. And some of them still today have thoughts against us that are absolutely wrong. And they have no, no mercy in their heart for the plight of our people. They look at our people and they see that we scum. Just yesterday I was walking, I was walking, uh, uh, walking out of the radio station and saw a... Uh, we, we all talking, you know what I'm saying? We talking after the radio show. And we, you know what I'm saying? We doing all the talking that we usually do. But, um, you know what I'm saying? I, pay, I try to pay attention to stuff. So immediately, I see a black dude, and he kind of waving his hand, so it caught my eye. You know what I'm saying? We crossing the street. So he, he just hopping on the crosswalk about to cross uh, uh, Maryland Parkway. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm coming on the way, me and, uh, and the people I was with, we coming on the other side. You know what I'm saying? And so... He's like waving his hands like that. And I'm looking at him like, why are you waving his hands? But then it's this white like truck, you know what I'm saying? Like the OJ Simpson Bronco, you know what I'm saying? It's like this old white truck, you know what I'm saying? Pull up. It's a lady in it with her window up. But she pull up like into the crosswalk a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You know how you kind of pull up too far? She pull up into the crosswalk. And so the man right there, and he kind of just like walking, waving his hands like that. So I don't know if he hit her car, you know what I'm saying? Or why he's waving his hands or something. But I know that he's like going like this. And then she rolled down the window, and she yelling at him, like, get out the way or something like that. And then, you know what I'm saying, she says, you blank inward. Just like that. Just blank inward. And then rolls up the window. Just rolls up the window on him. So you get closer to the man because he's walking across the street, and you see he, like, you find out the man's a mute. Right? Probably got some type of mental, mental illness or something, but the man's a mute. So I'm looking at the lady because she can see it now. I'm looking to see if maybe she's going to roll down the window and apologize. Right? And the people I'm with, they didn't catch it. You know what I'm saying? The whole time they talking, my mind ain't even on what they talking about no more. I'm looking right at this lady. Dead in the face. Right? And I'm looking at it. The heart of these people are gone. A lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff was done by the Most High God to us on they, by their hands. And they don't even have they don't even have a heart or any mercy within them to look it up and be like, yeah, that was messed up. Yeah, it's it's because of some of our actions that y'all y'all in this place. Y'all in a place that it's tough for y'all to get out. So in a place where it, it feels like y'all don't even know how to get out. Yeah, some of that to do to us. They don't even own up to it. They don't even have a heart. But they feel like they 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 they, they should be able to call us the N word. It's real nice. When I walk past her, I'll just look her in the eye and I told her you should be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And she looked at me, made some faces. She knew what I was saying. I yelled it to her. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Right? That's the position that all of us are in. We in a position where we have people who have no mercy towards us because the Most High God won't allow their hearts to have mercy towards us. Because he put us here 
because of our disobeyment to him. And now the only thing that we can do is make it worse because now we're walking around calling ourselves Christians. Like those same people are telling us about ourselves. Those same people that enslaved us, the same people that taught us lies, the same people that misled us, the same people that called us in words, the same people that raped our mothers, the same people that did all these things, we take the Jesus that they say is right, we take the news that they say is right, we take the politician that they say is right, and we throw away the people that they say is wrong. LeVar Ball get on TV, we say, nah, we don't want nothing with him. That don't make no sense to us. I ain't saying the man right about everything he do. He ain't wrong for the reason they saying he wrong, no. Right? That stuff bother us. It bother us, why? Because it really bother us? It bother us? It, let's, let's be real. Does it really bother us that a black man is on TV saying, I want to invest in my boys and my boys is the best? Does that really sound like something that's bothering us? Or do it bother them? And because it bothers them, now it bothers us. Because we still slaves. We still do everything these people say. Right? If the Democrats, if the Democrats are the ones that have been enslaved, is it interesting or not that we always vote Democrat? Because we still slaves. It's just a different different point. The same thing that we're going through this over and over again. And the only reason this stuff is not letting up is for one reason. We still did go, uh, go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 26. We'll get up out of here. Looked at a mute man and just say, you the N-word. Ain't got no heart in there to apologize or say I'm sorry or, you know what, you right. I'm pulled out into the middle of the darn street. I went too far. Do you need a ride somewhere? These people going to pay for it. Most high God ain't let none of this stuff. Don't nobody get by. Nobody gets by. Not me either. Right? We ain't getting by either. But I tell you for sure, these Gentiles ain't getting by either. Not the Hebrew and not the Gentile. Nobody gets by. Everybody gonna get it. And it's gonna be right too. It's gonna be right for them to burn in hell. And anybody of us who think that we Hebrews, so they ain't gotta they ain't gotta do right, and you can still be out there cussing and smoking weed like some of y'all do. Y'all gonna burn in hell too. And y'all going before they do. He said to the Jew first and then the Gentile. And it's gonna be right on both sides. On all accounts, that thing gonna be right. What we got? It's Leviticus chapter 26. What I want? 30? 31? Twenty-nine? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven? It's Leviticus chapter uh, 26, verse 27. Oh, no. You want, uh, you want um, 37. 37? Yeah. It's Leviticus chapter, chapter 26, verse 37. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth. Mm -hmm. And you shall have no power to stand before your enemies. Mm -hmm. And you shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. Mm -hmm. And they that are left of you shall punish away their iniquity in your enemies. What do you think is happening right now? All right? After slavery, all, all, after all these different things, what do you think we're doing? We're pining away in our iniquity. All these people sinners. All right? Got a bunch of game bangers, you know what I'm saying? A bunch of people glorifying game banging. Glorifying, going for just glorifying seeing all the way around. Right? The whole nation on darn drugs. Right? Can't nobody have a decent, decent, enjoyable time without being high and on drugs or drunk. Right? We pining away in iniquity. Alright, keep going. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity, in their iniquity in your enemy's land, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. If they shall confess, confess their iniquity and if the they shall do what? If they confess their iniquity mm -hmm. and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass which they trespassed against me. He said, all you gotta do is confess your iniquity and the iniquity of our fathers. So not just me. It ain't just 
Lord, I sinned against you, right? And I disobeyed your commandments. He said, you also got to confess the iniquities of our fathers. So we, we got to be like, well, Lord, not only did I do it, but our father sinned against you. And this is why we're here, because they sinned against you, right? So he said, confess our iniquities and the iniquities of our fathers. With their trespasses, which they trespassed against me, uh -huh. and that also they have walked contrary unto me. And that they have done what? Walked contrary unto me. So he wants us to confess our iniquities, our iniqui the iniquities of our fathers, and the fact that our fathers and us have walked contrary to him. We've been against him. This is what he wants us to confess. What else? And that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. Then he said he also wants us to confess that he's walked contrary to us and brought us into the land of our enemies. This is very important. This is very important. What else? If then their uncircumcised heart be humbled, mm -hmm. and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember and will remember the land. You want the oppression to stop? Listen to the man. He told you, confess your iniquities, the iniquities of your father, and then also you want to confess that he's walked contrary to you. Then on top of that, he says, and also that, I'm sorry, that we walk contrary to him. He said, now on top of that, also admit that he walked contrary to us, and he brought us into the land of our captivity, into the land of our enemies. All right? He said, accept the punishment. That's what this is. Accept the punishment. That's all you have to do. It's kind of hard when everybody walking around talking about how blessed they are. They don't want to admit it. They think God on their side. That's what they convince themselves of. They convince themselves God on their side. Man just told you, I've been walking contrary to you. You've been walking contrary to me. And I've been walking contrary to you. But what are we going to say? I'm blessed anyway. I mean... I may go through some hard time, but God ain't never left my side. Man just told you, he walking, he walking against you. He ain't never been by your side. But in your mind, he been by your side. You won't admit it. Right? Won't admit it. And that's why we're continue, continuously in this state, because our people haven't been educated about what the books say. They haven't been educated about who they are. They've been taught that who they are don't matter. Every other race, they can go on, on, on DNA.com and look up their ancestry and this is this is what my great grandfather was, and that thing glorious to everybody else. Everybody else, it makes sense. We start connecting to the book, and it just don't matter for us. You know what? It don't matter what color Yahweh shoe, what color Jesus was. It don't matter to you. It sure matter on your pictures, though. That thing matter a whole lot on your picture. All of them white, uh, and it don't matter. It's so hold on. All of them randomly are white, cause it don't matter, right? It ain't like it ain't like some of them is black, some of them is white. All of them is white. All of them got the long flowing hair. But it don't it, it, some, it matter to some somebody. I have to say it matters to somebody. For all of them to be that way, somebody cares. I'm telling you, stop letting these people lie to us. Let's pray out. Stop letting these people lie to us. These people can't just tell us anything.